the problem is really difficult for those that are stranded locally because uh, because uh, the the problem with uh, with uh, uh, those that are stranded locally is the lack of transportation and LGU lockdowns. Uh, many uh, different universities have responded to it. Uh, the commission has been successful, for example, to bring students of Ilocos State Polytechnic from Boracay when they arrived uh, in Clark. We worked with the local governments and the schools and were able to bring them back to Ilocos. But in the case of UP Los Baños, they tried to bring students to Pangasinan and they were stopped in the boundary and were refused entry by the local governments. So this is a problem that is more complicated. We are using the sweeper flights of the Department of Tourism to bring them, but we are unsure whether they could go back to their respective provinces when they arrive in Manila or in other airports. So it is the universities that are uh, coordinating this together with the commission. And if the situation in the place where they're stranded is okay, we recommend that they stay there and wait for the quarantine to be lifted. Next, please. As far as public universities is concerned, immediately upon the imposition of ECQ, many universities produced COVID-related products for frontline workers, for local governments, for government agencies, and for local communities. The, uh, we, we are very proud of the work of the state universities and colleges because the products they produce provide immediate support for frontline workers, given that uh, the demand for a lot of these products are, uh, is very high, and even if you had money, you won't be able to pay it. So no more than 50 state universities and colleges have produced products and will continue to produce products, providing continuing funding for them to continue producing this for their communities. The state universities and colleges have been adjusting and preparing to the best they can to close the semester. The state universities and colleges are are quite uh, unique because almost all of them are using the new calendar. That means they started their semester in January. And uh, when, the, uh, when the ECQ was imposed, many of them were either in their midterm or have not even given their midterm examinations. So it is challenging to impose the semester. They are now shifting to flexible learning to open in August. Some other state universities and colleges are helping local governments establish quarantine centers. As far as the financial impact of COVID is concerned, it is negligible basically for sooks and looks, whether they open a little later because they have their own budgets. The impact will basically be in the difficulty in paying part-time faculty because of the no class, no pay policy. But we are concerned because resolution, there is a DBM memorandum that has been issued requiring all government agencies to implement a 35% reduction in the budget, including the budget for RA. of tuition and miscellaneous fees that we will give to state universities and colleges. Without this income, they, may, they will not be able to operate many, of many programs that they are running, or worse, we may be forced to allow them to collect tuition so that they will have income. We have written to the Department of Budget and Management that the position of the commission is that the allocation for RA10931, insofar as reimbursement of tuition and miscellaneous and tests, should not be included in the 35% reduction in the budget. Because this is not technically CHED money. This is money that goes to CHED 
so they can be reimbursed to the state universities and colleges or awarded to the students as tests. So we have submitted this position to the DBM yesterday. Next, please. This is the DBM uh, National Budget Circular 580-2020. So this will impact not just RA10931, but this will impact the individual state universities and colleges. This will constrain their ability to continue paying their job orders, their contractuals, and to be able to uh, uh, complete the, the projects that they are implementing for this year. Next, please. For private higher education institutions, the fiscal impact of uh, COVID and for the late school opening is something that we must all study very seriously for the following reasons. Unlike state universities and colleges or public universities, majority as much as 74% of private higher education institutions still use the old calendar. And therefore, they uh, are supposed to end in March and they are supposed to open their semester in June. Because of the limitations of ECQ, Many of them will not be able to open in June and are projecting or planning to open in August. Any delay in the opening, including the proposals of some to move the opening to October or even later, will affect the cash flow of these universities and the, the potential revenue loss because they will not be able to, co to collect any tuition. It could be as, as long as half a year if we move it to September. Therefore, the position of private HEIs must be seriously considered in any policies that we make. This is the position that I have taken in the IATF because I said, if they reduce their workforce or worse, if they close, the ones to be affected are not the private universities only, it will have create problems of access to higher education institution. In short, many students will not be able to enroll if the private universities uh, close. I am happy to announce or to uh, report that in the last IATF meeting, I was able to uh, convince the IATF to let Cocopea present its position this is actually rarely done in the IATF because the IATF really is a meeting of government agencies. But I'd like to thank the leadership of IATF because they allowed Cocopea to speak in the IATF meeting and the, the Department of Finance in particular is interested to work with just need to crunch numbers on the losses that they are getting. But we will get more of this when Cocopea speaks. Next, please. What are the actions taken by the Commission? As I said earlier, we have issued guidelines. First, guidelines to end the semester. We are, we are allowing flexibility in, uh, for higher education institutions, both public and The policy of flexibility is really anchored on the fact that the situation of public and private universities are unique across the country in terms of the size of university, their geographic location, the diversity of their programs, and the uh, start of their academic calendar. So we have uh, instructed universities that... Hmm. Have more than enough basis to close the calendar since their regular semester would have ended in end of March. We discourage in-person graduation giving, given the continuing need for social distancing and the restrictions on mass gathering. And we have, uh, we have uh, 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 taken a position that for all CHED recognized private HEIs, 
regardless of accreditation status, are allowed to exercise flexibility in, the, in determining the extent of adjustments for their approved calendar. Next, please. For the, for the other universities that are using the old calendar, we are allowing them a maximum of one month to continue their semester after the lifting of the ECQ. This is premised on the fact that this one semester will use flexible learning, will be used to complete the requirements for students so that they, so that they can be graded, and their uh, credentials be prepared so they can graduate. We, uh, we, uh, the commission has uh, stated that for degree programs that require clinical duties, such as those for medicine, nursing, and allied health programs, we are giving flexibility to the universities to extend and adjust uh, and prepare a catch-up plan for their uh, for their students. Uh, for other degree programs that require OJT and internship, we have, uh, we, have, uh, we have told the universities that they should not allow their students to go back to their internship or OJT. This is because the companies may not be ready to, uh, to accept them or they might not be safe to continue the internship and therefore, only the, the schools have uh, brought back all their interns by March 15, and the rest of the requirements for internship will now be done in the university or with the university. We have instructed the uh, appropriate offices of the commission to look into the curriculum, and if necessary, reduce the number of hours of internship or reduce the activities in the internship only for this batch of students. What is important? We have also issued an advisory, and I'd like to thank the private universities, because when I ask the private universities to be considerate in, and compassionate in collecting tuition and other school fees during the ECQ, all the private universities responded positively. So there is no collection of tuition fees during the quarantine. And many universities are adjusting collection systems, uh, either doing it on a standard basis uh, for the rest of the students so they can, uh, they can continue the semester. Next, please. The other good thing that has been done during the ECQ is that the Commission on Higher Education introduced a resolution in the IATF that for local governments that plan to use the facilities of SOOCs as quarantine centers, that they must enter into a memorandum of agreement with the Commission and the SOOC. We did this so that there will, be, there will be the same standards across all the facilities in the country. And what we did was to create a CHED public health experts group led by the D College of Public Health in Manila, Dean June Belisario, who is a former DOH undersecretary and a WHO consultant an expert on epidemiological uh, studies. And it is this uh, technical uh, experts group that is guiding the uh, LGUs, the guiding the SOOCs in establishing quarantine centers for SOOCs. Next, please. We'd like to report to the commission that Sorsogon State College and the provincial government of Sorsogon was the first to successfully implement a provincial quarantine center. And the from Sorsogon State, we now have 14 state universities and colleges who are practically either operating quarantine centers. Next, please. There are those that are 